what is going on guys so here we are test riding the brand new 2019 zx 10 r this is kawasaki's flagship 1000 cc they have uh, two other models out of the 10 the rr and the se i believe it is it's got abs it's got an imu it's got a quick shifter up and down i can't wait to try that out zero miles so we're going to basically just play around with it as far as that goes electronics how the modes work guys i'm going to link you to kawasaki's website so you can get all the specs as far as seat height goes brake caliper size tire size things of that nature because i'm going to do this first ride based on what the bike feels like the ease of use the usability of the rider aids with the electronic assist how the ergos feel things of that nature so again guys i'm not going to make this a boring journalist review so i'm going to give you the information you need to know that you're going to use every day this bike is relatively new as far as all the aids go you got to think about it the way the the sport bike or in this case super bike market has been going everything is advancing so so far ahead of its time i mean you've got lcd led screens you've got quick shifters you've got six axis imus slide control lift control abs you've got all this crazy stuff that aids the rider now your normal mortal human being will never ever probably ever be able to squeeze what these bikes can do out on their own you know it takes someone like jonathan rea josh heron you know cam bobier guys like that to really maximize these bikes potential because there is way more potential in this bike than than a normal human being like myself can handle and especially on the street you get it on the track again the regular person isn't going to be able to squeeze that out so what i saw or what i found interesting with this bike is the ride modes or basically the rider aids now i was playing with this bike in in the uh, dealership you've got power mode the traction control ebc i can't remember what that is off the top of my head i think that's engine braking control i believe that is what it is you've got your mode selection here which is really really neat you know you've got your clock lap timer which is really cool odometer trip a trip b miles per gallon average stuff like that that's cool but to get into changing the the modes you have to hold it down and then go into the that's cool you can adjust the, the shift light so you got kawasaki launch control mode that's pretty neat that is really interesting but again that's not for me to test quick shifter down we're going to turn that on okay quick shifter up we're going to turn that on because i i really want to know how this feels engine brake we'll leave that low powerful yeah everything else everything else is good with that being said let's just go ahead and hop right into it and ride this puppy so right off the bat what's really nice is it's almost like it's got an a stall assist on it which is kind of un, unusual for me i rode an sv 650 one time and it kind of had that similar similar function where it basically blipped the throttle a little bit kept the engine revs a little high so that way you didn't stall it oh the sun's bright and that's what this you know and that's what i've heard leader bikes or thousand cc bikes that's what they do they just have so much torque and, and power that they just kind of pull themselves clutch pull is really good it's it's not adjustable like the 636 which is all new for this year as well but it's got a good pull on it it's it's in a good location it grabs really well and and feels really good on the brake side you don't you get a minimal adjustable lever old school adjustable lever on a brembo master cylinder which is all new for i think it's 2016 and up again this is a 2019 model krt edition oh before we get too much into that these bumps are really rough on this bike the suspension doesn't really soak it up because obviously it's race bike but that's okay was really nice so i actually had to shift this bike without the quick shifter on and that was super smooth it cuts ignition and set a spark or fuel well spark is technically a nick ignition um it doesn't cut fuel it cuts uh spark it is a little 
it's a little oomph, you know what I'm saying? It just kind of chugs you forward a little bit. But then again, that is in the lower RPMs. I'm not going to rev this thing out because it has zero miles on it. I definitely don't want to wring this bike's neck because that would be a potentially horrendous situation. Back to the master cylinder. The, uh, the Brembo's all new for this uh, 2016 and up model that they redesigned. And it had the uh, Tococho Tokiko Tokiko brakes on it, which from my understanding were really good. I unfortunately haven't been able to ride that model, but the Brembo's are supposed to be an upgrade. It doesn't have the bite like I would expect it to have. The 636, it clamps down hard. You know, if you want to stop, that thing just stops. To, to me, the Brembo's just don't have that same feel. I mean, I understand it's a bigger bike. There's more rotating mass and yada, 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 but it just doesn't feel like it would, like it would stop how you would want them to for Brembo's. Let's try these quick shifts real quick. Yeah, that's super nice. Ooh, gravel, 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 gravel. Yeah, that quick shifter's smooth, boy. Man, that's really nice. And that was just up to 8,000 RPMs. And then the quick shifter, I was expecting it to be more clunky downshifting, but surprisingly enough, it's really smooth. Yeah, it's got that weird little hard to press, but it just, it goes down. And what's really impressive is that it does auto blip, which is really nice. And it doesn't lug downshifting either, which is really, really nice as well. But the suspension, it's really bumpy. And that's exactly what I would expect out of a super bike of this cal caliber, not caliber. I'm not even going to test really the cornering capabilities, but it tips in real well nice and smooth for a 1000 it's not really heavy i was expecting it to be a little bit more heavy underneath me and i've always thought these tanks were kind of big it's pretty slender and narrow and it just fits really good that's one thing i love about kawasaki sport bikes they fit or you fit in them really really well and i love that the 636 i rode for about two hours last weekend and I, I truly enjoyed it. It was really, really nice. Back to the suspension. I wouldn't expect anything less. It is stiff, it has that good feel. You know, obviously it's not set for my weight, but you do feel every bump in the road if we're talking about this bike for a street bike. Is that bad? No. Does it matter to me? Not really, because this would be an ultimate all around machine other than a 600. You can track this, you can take it on the road, you know, and ergo wise, it's actually pretty comfortable. You know, I am impressed, you know, no throttle input and you can kind of hear the engine spin up a little bit. Left the visor open so you guys can hear the quick shifter a little better. Speaking of the ergos, you know, 5'8", myself, kind of a short uh, inseam, if you will. And I fit really, really well into the pocket of the tank. It has this long plastic piece that goes all the way around to the seat and your knee fits right in there. I do have a little bit of pressure on my wrist. That's because the seat height, from what I've heard and my understanding, it's actually raised up compared to the old model. So you're arched forward a little bit. You do have a little bit more pressure on the hands and the wrist. Now, any good motorcycle rider knows you're not supposed to ride with a lot of weight on the handlebars. You really control the bike with your feet and things of that nature. You know, not every typical normal day rider knows that, which is not necessarily a bad thing. You can always benefit from learning more. And that's one thing I have to tell myself as well. You know, don't, I have to remind myself, you know, stop putting so much weight on the handlebars. You don't need that much weight. Price tag, it's still around that 15,000, 16,000 mark, which is an unbelievable deal for this bike considering it has the IMU electronics in it, all the rider aids, all of the racer aids, if you really want to look at it like that. Because again, your normal everyday rider isn't going to be able to use all of this. And if you are planning to track this bike or race this bike, the super stock class in Moto America, the Kawasaki's are the top bikes. They are on the podium every single weekend, it seems like. My other gripe about this bike, which I've come to kind of like it actually. It's the instrument panel. Now, Kawasaki is, as far as I know, the only bike to have an instrument panel like this. You've got this digital analog tack, right? 
and then you have this digital instrument cluster with your speed gear uh, gear positioning indicator rider aids normal bike what's the word i'm looking for normal bike parameters that's the word parameters you know engine temp stuff like that all of these new 1000s the r1 jixer honda obviously ducati aprilia those guys or manufacturers i should say they all have converted to an led type instrument gauge cluster which i think is amazing it you you're in a cockpit you're basically on a low flying jet low flying aircraft the least you can do is put in a cockpit that looks like a rocket now don't get me wrong i love this style gauge but it's just to me it's outdated a bike out of the factory with all these features it's just an unbelievable value and that's what kawasaki has done not just with this bike but with all of their bikes their new 636 under 10 grand with a quick shifter you know i was actually looking on the way well not on the way but before i came over here to the dealership yamaha offered a quick shifter option for the first couple people that bought the new r6 but it still hasn't and that's been a couple years now and they still haven't added it added it as an option and it's more expensive than the new zx6r i notice it's shaking a little bit that's that's a little flimsy my goodness wow mm, i don't know if that's a downforce thing or what it's got cool little cutout holes i'm not too sure where the air goes for that that's that beats me even though i can't lean this bike over i do have a lot of confidence in this bike in the corners it just feels really planted even right now it feels really good they talk about this bike not being able to come out of the corners low to mid and i can understand that at race pace to me if anything it's it's more beneficial because it makes the power feel really linear the more predictable a bike is the better i just got off that bike again with me having a short a short leg seam i really don't have a, a big leg seam or tall leg seam normally i'll scrape the tail or the plastics or something like that in that case i didn't which was which is really nice they've updated the r1 aesthetics they've updated the jixer aesthetics cosmetics whatever you guys want to call it honda you know they just recently had a big redesign this bike is due for one why do i say that if any of you guys follow world superbike you'll know that Kawasaki is unfortunately getting its butt spanked by Ducati. Now, that could be a couple different reasons, but again, if you guys follow World Superbike, you'll know Jonathan Rea is the man, and he's been getting his butt spanked. I think he just recently won a race. He's been coming in like second every race to that Ducati. So, the engineer, there was an article, really interesting. I do not want a drop of gas to drip on this bike. There was an article about the engineer for the world superbike team that said you know if they don't do something with their zx10 now if they don't update it or change it you know they're just going to keep falling off so i have a feeling for 2020 this bike it just might get an update i could be wrong but i could be right as they say not super duper on the tank or anything but you can see i've got a toe balls my feet are down now if i lean it all the way whoop don't like doing that though if i lean it all the way over flat foot but this foot's off the ground but i usually leaned over rear foot or right foot on the rear brake you know on the handlebar foot on the ground knee in the tank ready to go you know i'm ready to take off guys i really hope you enjoyed this video i really hope you've learned something you know i hope it swayed your decision on getting this bike as opposed to others Again, I know I don't include the exact specs or specifics, but again, I want to let you know how the bike feels, how it rides, and what I think is very important to those of you that are considering about buying it. So be sure to head on over to Northeast Georgia Motorsports to check this bike out and for an opportunity to ride it yourself. This bike is on demo at their location, but I'm going to turn this baby back in. Again, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that bell for more notifications about future demo rides, and we'll see you on the next video.